Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Baxter and I'm a developer advocate for Codename Bluemix. Now, as you're all probably aware of now, uh, Bluemix is IBM's new platform as a service offering. It is based on an open source project called Cloud Foundry and it is currently in open beta. Uh, so what that means is basically anyone can join uh, the beta. Uh, you just need to uh, sign up and request access. And once you're granted access to the beta, the first thing everyone probably going to do is try to log in uh, to Bluemix and uh, explore what uh, the UI looks like. So I figured I'd give everyone a quick tutorial of the Bluemix UI and show you some of the functionality and features uh, that you can expect uh, to see when you first log into Bluemix. So once you've been approved for the beta, uh, you just go to Bluemix.net and click the login button. And then you just need to log in with your IBM ID and password. And after you log in, you'll be brought to the dashboard. Now the dashboard shows you kind of an overall picture of uh, what's happening with all the applications and all the services that you're using uh, within Bluemix. Um, so the first thing you'll you'll notice here is I you probably won't the first time you're logging you probably won't have any applications you won't have any services but I have a couple of applications um, already deployed to Bluemix and uh, a few services that I'm using. Um, one of the cool things is that you get a very quick overview of where you're at as regards to uh, the different limits that are imposed. Uh, with your account on Bluemix. So uh, in the beta, everything's pretty much the same. Everyone gets eight gigabytes of memory. You can use up to 20 services. You can deploy however many apps you want, uh, but you can't exceed those limits. But you get some nice uh, diagrams or graphics of um, how much you're using at this current time. So you can see I'm using about 2.6 uh, gigabytes of, of memory uh, out of eight, and I'm using three services out of 20. Uh, the middle graphic is, is, is telling me the state of uh, all my applications, the health of my applications. So uh, in my case, all my applications are up and running, so everything's nice and green. The four squares underneath this checkbox here basically represent the four different applications that I have running. Um, if one of the applications was to not be running or to be in a bad state for some reason, then uh, one of these boxes would be red, and there'd be a big uh, red X through the middle of this circle here. Uh, basically telling me, hey, there's something wrong with one of your applications. Maybe it's expected, maybe it's not expected, but it kind of gives you a nice heads up. Um, the other thing you're going to notice immediately is that there's going to be this menu over to the left-hand side of the UI. Um, and you can see that it, it breaks it down into three different categories here. So there's all, which is the view we're looking at right now, which displays all of the applications and all my services I have running. Uh, but in some cases, if you have a lot of applications or you have a lot of services, this can be a little overwhelming. So you can break things down by, hey, just show me the applications or just show me the services if I want. Um, the other thing is that there's this big blue box at the top here and with the word dev in it. Uh, and this is basically displaying the current space I'm looking at. Um, you can click on it to see a drop down of uh, all the other spaces um, for your organization. So what are spaces and what, are, what is an organization? In, in, in blue mixed terms. So uh, an organization is kind of a, a, a structural unit for uh, a group of people uh, and apps. So for example, I can break, I can create organizations for my sales team or for my developer team or for my, uh, my outreach team or for my IT team, right? Um, and you know, all of my sales uh, related applications will go in my sales organization and I'll add all the people related to creating those sales uh, applications uh, to that organization uh, and everything that's related to for IT applications I can create an IT organization at everyone uh, that that's related to the IT apps uh, to that organization so it's a way of dividing the uh, the applications and people uh, that are working on those applications in Bluemix in a given organization you may have multiple spaces and a common use for spaces is kind of breaking down different environments. So it's very common um, in, in an agile environment to have uh, a developer version of the application running, a staging version of the application running, and a production version of the application running. So obviously the production version of the application is what everyone's, everyone, all your customers and everyone is using. It's, it's fairly stable, um, it has little problems, and the staging 
a staging application may be something that's uh, maybe a little bit less stable. It's getting ready to be moved to production, has the next set of features that you're going to launch, stuff like that. And a development version is cutting edge stuff, cutting edge code, something like that. So it's very common to create um, spaces for those different classes of applications, we'll call them, um, so that I can have a development space where all my, de my, my development applications are, are running, the development versions of my applications. And this is probably something where if you're working in agile development where um, there's builds happening multiple times a day and uh, those builds result in uh, d deployments to Bluemix of, of the code uh, straight from Trunk, for example, right? So it could be bugs in it. It's the latest and greatest stuff. And so forth. Same with the staging and production environment. These, the staging and production spaces will have all my my stage applications where there's probably testing happening, verification, stuff like that. And production has all my production applications running in them. Uh, you can manage your spaces. You can create new spaces. You can create new organizations. You can delete spaces. You can add people to different organizations and spaces all from the Bluemix UI uh, just by, by clicking on um, either the uh, manage organizations up here or the um, manage uh, spaces here. Once you get to the manage organizations, you can then manage the spaces for those uh, different organizations here. Next thing you're probably going to look to is the catalog. And the catalog is pretty much where all the fun stuff is anyways. Um, the catalog contains three main things. It contains boilerplates, it contains runtimes, and it contains services. So boilerplates are, you know, the getting started applications, right? So uh, if I want to uh, I want to get started building a Node.js application, I might choose the Node.js web starter and it kind of gives me uh, a base uh, application to get started with and to build from. Uh, runtimes are the different uh, you know, languages we support. Um, you can see there's four listed here, um, Liberty for Java, Node, Ruby on Rails, and Ruby Sinatra. But that's not all the languages we support. Um, we support a, a wide variety of languages in, in addition to these, including PHP, uh, Python, Go, for example. Um, all these languages are supported, but they're supported by community, um, uh, what's called community build packs. And um, I'm not going to go into community build packs today and what they are, but just know that just because you see these four languages here doesn't mean that these are the only four languages or runtimes that, that Bluemix support. We support a large number more languages than, than you see here. Um, they're just not um, uh, listed. Uh, the services um, are uh, either um, uh, infrastructure-related services or or functionality uh, that you want to add to your application um, that you wouldn't want to have to manage yourself because being a platform as a service is, is all about um, you know, not having to manage the infrastructure or very easily uh, adding functionality to your applications in, in a very short period of time. So uh, for example, if I wanted to add a database to my application, I need a database for my application to store data, I can pick from one of the databases that, I, that, that, are, uh, that are here as services. So there's a Mongo one, there's a MySQL one, um, for example, you can choose from and easily add these to your application uh, to use within your app. Um, you know, there's also, for example, this push notification. So if I needed to, um, you know, push uh, notifications to mobile devices, and I didn't want to build all that code myself, I can use this push notification service, add it to my application, and I can easily start pushing or using push notifications from my application. Um, so just as a sample to get started here, Let's pick um, the Java DB web starter, for example. I'll click on this, and it tells me a little bit about um, the, the web starter and what it does. You can see it uses the Liberty runtime and uses this, a SQL database. So um, let me click Create Application. I'm going to put it in my dev space. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, Java DB starter, and uh, click Create. And what this is basically going to do is going to bring me um, back to the dashboard and um, it will start to provision the application in Bluemix. So you can see that now I have this red circle with an X in it. Don't be alarmed. It doesn't mean that the, the provisioning failed or anything. It just means the application isn't running yet. Um, it's, it's, it's provisioning itself and starting the application up. So as things change with the provisioning of the application, um, this nice drop down here will give me a nice update of what's happening. So we can see that the application was created and now it's staging. And as uh, things change with the application, we'll see that uh, new things show up here. So we can see that the instances are now starting 
So now we're starting all the instances in Bluemix. Um, and finally, the last stage will be that the application is up and running. And once that happens, um, we'll see that everything turns green and we're good to go, right? So now we can go and access the application. So if I close this, we can see that uh, I can click on the application here. Give because And that brings me to a nice overview of what's happening here. You can see the application name, the URL, services it's using, the runtime, uh, etc. So if I click on uh, the Liberty for Java runtime here, it'll give me a little bit more details. I can see how many instances are running, how much memory each instance is using. If I want to increase the number of instances that are using, let's say I want to bring it up to 10, um, the, uh, the memory quota on the side will automatically adjust and show me uh, how much memory I have left after doing that. So you can see that if I brought it up to 10, I would only have 384 megs left. If I went to 11, I'd be over my memory limit, so I couldn't do that. Um, I'm not going to change the number of instances uh, right now. I can also change the memory each instance is using. And same here, if I change the memory, um, the memory quota on the right there will update uh, as I change it. I can see statistics about each instance uh, that's running here. So I can see how much CPU is using, uh, the memory it's using. This is obviously good for debugging. Uh, at the bottom is probably one of the more important things, and this is environment variables. And the reason this is important is because uh, this VCAP services environment variable contains all the details about the services that are bound to your application. So like I said before, when we, when we looked at the Java uh, DB web starter, it had a a SQL database service that was going to be bound to it. Uh, and this is the information about this SQL database server. So this contains all the information that I'm going to need uh, within my application in order to connect to that, uh, that database. Um, so what I would do in my code is then access this environment variable, pull out the information I need, and then, then I can start talking to this database. So this is a very important piece of information um, uh, for you to keep track of and to understand what it does. Uh, and we'll talk more about that obviously when we, when we start talking about writing code uh, that are using services. The other important thing here is the files and logs. Um, so this can, uh, the most important thing here is the logs folder. So I can go in here and see what's happening uh, in the logs for debugging purposes. If there was any errors, it would show up in the standard error log. Uh, the standard out contains everything that's printed out to the standard out. You can see this is just information about um, the application, the runtime starting, actually, Liberty starting in this case. I can download the log file. So I can just click the button here and download the log file if I want to analyze it further outside of the browser. Um, so let's head back to the catalog and say, you know, I wanted to add another service to, uh, to my application. Maybe I wanted to add uh, the Redis service, for example, to my application. How would I do that? Um, I can click on uh, the Redis service and I can click add to application and I'll select a space again here. I'll click my dev space and let's just add it to uh, the Java DB starter that I just, the web application that I just created. I don't have to associate with an application. I can choose do not associate and create the application of the service, uh, but that won't really do anything until it's added to something. So uh, let's pick the Java DB web starter and click create. And that automatically adds the service to my application. You can see now we have the Redis service here, uh, and uh, it shows up down here as well. And if I go back to my uh, runtime and check out the VCAP services, we'll now see that the Redis service details are now here too for available to my application. So my application code can now uh, take advantage of this Redis service. And that's how easy it is to add a service uh, or a piece of functionality uh, to your application. So um, if I go back to the overview here, one last thing I'd like to point out is uh, whenever you create uh, uh, an application from the catalog or a service from the catalog, there's this uh, usually a guide associated with it. This is the getting started guide, so um, it tells you all the information you need to do to get started with the application. Uh, basically from installing the command line tool, downloading all the code for the application, uh, extracting it and modifying it, and then pushing it back to Bluemix uh, and, and adding your updates. Um, we're not going to do that today, we'll do that in a, in a future video, but I just wanted to point out that this guide is, is right here from available to this sidebar, um, and you can get to it pretty easily by clicking on the drop-down. Um, the last thing I'd like to point out is the docs here. So docs is probably the single most important part of the UI. It has all information for getting started, it has tutorials, it has information about runtimes and services, 
uh, has information about deploying applications, troubleshooting, points you to places where you can go to get help. Uh, it's a really, really good resource for, for using Bluemix and uh, everything you want to get started. So I suggest you go and read through the documentation before you do anything else. Um, and uh, some great stuff here to get started.